a mummy decides to start an innkeeping business. So you all meet at an inn. It's built on top of a tomb and the innkeeper is a deathless guardian that lays a curse on all that leaves their room a huge mess when they exit. When a new crossroads connecting several empires together and bringing a lot of trade across the area is built right outside the hidden tomb of an ancient, long forgotten emperor, its guardian mummy predicts that soon there will be a trading city here and his liege's tomb is inevitably discovered and defiled by a bunch of adventurers. His solution? Disguise himself as a human and have an inn built right on top of the tomb. This will ensure no one will start digging up from there and perhaps get him some news from the outside world and a bit of live company for the first time in millennia. Centuries later, there is indeed a vast city there, as he predicted, a neutral ground for many traders and merchants, rife with thieves and politics. And right in the middle of it, there is the Emperor's Rest Inn, the oldest building in the city. It has a good service, strange but delicious food you don't get from anywhere else, clean rooms with no vermin, a helpful and friendly old innkeeper that's been there longer than anyone remembers, and a whole bunch of dark secrets. This will be the inn the party meets up in, and will probably remain the centre of the campaign for a while, even if the main story is told outside of it. Still, I think I'd like to bring up an occasional plot hook about the inn itself. Any ideas? The party is hired to retrieve a lost crown from the ruins of a fallen and forgotten kingdom, now swallowed by the sands of time. If they do some research, they learn that the crown is a powerful ancient artifact, one that grants its wielder power beyond imagining, enough to shape the nations of the world in his or her whim. Naturally, many others are interested in it, and the group will have to fight many battles to acquire it, and think hard about where to put it or whom to give it to. If they do end up giving it to the old innkeeper, he will acknowledge the crown's power, but add that he really has no aspirations. He will then proceed to spend some time just watching the crown dreamily with a happy smile on his face, like he had been reunited with an old friend. Once snapped out of it, he will pay the group what he owes, which is plenty. I really like that. I like that. I, I, I really like this guardian. He seems like a very, <laughs> yeah. very sweet old man. Yeah, but don't fuck with him, because yeah, he'll I, fucking tear your face off. <laughs> yeah, I, I would imagine you'd end up getting eaten alive or something. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. <laughs> but he does seem like a very kind, gentle old man. I, yeah. I really like him. I, I, I love the idea of him. A small cult forms around the inn. Adventurers asked to monetize it by organizing it into an exclusive members club. Sudden craze about the mummy's old mead knowledge and drinks makings. Turns out he's adding drugs to the drink, just like we used to. Was it not? There was a. I remember. I got an article not that long ago. There was a Chinese chef putting heroin in his food. Really? Yeah. Should he cook? Not used to have cocaine in it. Yeah, it did. Yeah, like a lot of stuff did have it back then. But this was like a couple of years ago. <laughs> Mate, imagine drinking a thing of coke rubbed with cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, does the job. Competitors offer to sell franchising rights to the pub. The emperor wakes up, takes charge of the inn. It is terrible at finances. <laughs> Sounds about that. Like, let's yeah. be honest with you. No innkeeper keeps his inn forever. At least, no innkeeper that isn't a deathless guardian. Every 50 to 60 years or so, the innkeeper must find a way to both fake the death of his latest persona and convincingly establish a new one to avoid rising suspicion and inviting unwanted scrutiny. Can he bring the party to his confidence and aid him in his task? I don't That's know. I do love the idea of that as a quest. However, I do like the idea of, like, you know, oh no, he's dead. Oh. Yeah. You know, but like, yeah. this guy, like, let's be yeah. honest with you, he does sound like pretty evil if you don't know yeah. him. Underneath that, somebody wrote, however magical his disguise, nothing can stop the mummy's smell, requiring him to acquire expensive magical scent removers to block what he calls his bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> his supply is running out, and he hires the party to go get some more. <laughs> I love that. Honestly, <laughs> I, I, I love the cartoony aspect of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't know, it's just got something to it for me. Realistically speaking, the mummy would just seem like a weird foreigner with unusual customs. He could probably convince the stupid everyman that his bandages are a full body turban and wear proper clothing over that. Maybe nobody ever sees him eating or drinking anything. Maybe he always seems awake and ready to provide service at the front desk. Maybe he has a weird tendency to bring up preserving old plots of land or buildings at town gatherings, so long as he is useful and not rude. I can see a fantasy realm excusing such an unusual individual, save for the more superstitious types. Unless he has distinct mummy powers, whatever those may be, or that distinct mummy smell, he could very easily blend in with the time. 
I doubt he would be a quirky, lol so random character either, as that would attract more attention than he's already receiving. If anything, he would act as ordinary or formal as possible. Yeah, I don't really see him bringing up much attention to no, himself. I see him being, like, everybody knows him as, you know, the weird guy who can see him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, would, like, yeah. He, he doesn't draw attention, just everybody knows him. Yeah, he's kind of like one of those local, like, he's not quite been, celebrity, yeah. but, like, oh, uh, yeah, but I But he's always know. been about. Yeah. You know, everybody, like, it's like that person who may have, like, been about whenever your granda and your nanny was rocking uh, by. He's like, no, he's always been I, here. I, he's never leaving. He's going <laughs> to die behind that counter. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm, I've got bets on he's, he's got to die soon. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come on here. He's been here for what? At least 70 years now? There's no way. Like, I wonder, I want me. What age is he? Made, made 50, 50 gold to ever can get his tarpon off. <laughs> I, I want to see, I want to see how decrepit he looks underneath that. Yeah, but, he's what, or he's got like that, um, you know how in everybody's street there was always like a witch. Oh yeah, yeah. He's, he's definitely he's, he's, he's one. Of, he's one of those ones, and we kids run up and ping his window through rocks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like who can get him to come out and annoy him? <laughs> <laughs> Knock door run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get the old man to chase you. Yeah. Actually, I've got a funny story. I'll, I'll, t- I'll say this one before we move on because I'm never going to get to get the chance to ever talk about this story ever again. So me and me playing football. We must have been about six years old at the time. I was going to meet. Uh, Jacob's house so was this was like years ago he lived, lived he lived anywhere far away from us and I was going to his house and we were playing football and there was like this like nursing home at the end of the driveway and we were using like their front like driveway thing as like nets yeah. you know what I mean like you know because yeah. it had like quite a big wall in between yeah. and uh this old man starts screaming like the wind hit me, Jacob, and fucked a butter knife at him. Like, the I, butter knife? Yeah, like, I mean, fully, Fuck. fully fucking winged it at him. Near scalp, Jacob. <laughs> he was only like seven. <laughs> we were only playing football. We weren't like, it wasn't like we were up to no good or anything. <laughs> it's one of those like vivid memories that just comes into my mind from time to time. I'm like, Fuck me. <laughs> Imagine Jesus winging Christ. a butter knife at some child. <laughs> well, uh, uh, you know, he's putting not all there in the head. <laughs> Either way, I, I never think I would ever get the chance to bring that story up on the channel ever. So, you know, there you guys go. Next post. Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. <laughs> so either way, the models are f- by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. <laughs> and like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking, so once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. A local noble is demanding the inn be formally signed over to him, as he owns every building in town safe for that one. The party can work for the noble, work for the innkeeper, or work out a deal between them. If they work for the noble, he will die of a mysterious locust-related accident later. That's Ooh. quite good. I love this as being like a really like overarching thing. Yeah. Where it does take the party a very long time to actually figure this out. Yeah. You know? Or maybe he could be the big body of, of the whole satin. No. no. I, I, he seems too kind. Like, no, he's too nice. No. I, 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 I don't know. I couldn't do that to him. The local town children believe Mr. Mumpsford is actually a mummy. Yes! That's what we're <laughs> yes! talking about. The party can inspect his habits, finding he never eats, sleeps, or leaves the inn for any reason. They can either cause the story to catch on in the town, keep it just a childish myth, or dispel it entirely. You can even recruit a holy man to visit town and storm the inn, burning the entire place down. I don't think you would make it that far. No. I think I think it would be. Your mommy would fuck your day up. It would be like one of those like you know horrible like anime ones where the you Stop. know or like wait a minute <laughs> or one of those like old old like you know kung fu films where like you know you just yeah. don't fuck with like, the old man in the room you'll absolutely mess your day up. Yeah. The party stays in a room and finds an infestation of extinct carnivorous insects in it. After surviving, presumably. The innkeeper apologises greatly and asks for their help in clearing the bugs out. The process includes shirtless chanting, sacrificing a goat and praising the sun. <laughs> <laughs> the emperor in the basement is actually a lich and has dark plans for the town above. The innkeeper would prefer the town stay alive since he likes them, but is totally loyal to his emperor. Figure out how to resolve the issue, but be warned, 
Hurting the Emperor will force the Innkeeper to put his life on the line defending him. Yeah, that would be a tough one now for me. Because the thing is, I, I, I would imagine the Guardian is genuinely bound yeah. to the lecture of the Emperor yeah. or whatever. And the- Mr. Mumford, I can't. <laughs> Mumford, that's a great Mumsford. name. <laughs> Mr. Mumsford. <don't> yeah, <laughs> I love that. Oh, I don't know. I couldn't bring. Some, I don't know. See whenever, see whatever people wear in like really kindly NPCs. I'm like, oh, you're sweet. Yeah. What's a good name for a mummy NPC? But like it, that it's not too obvious. I think Mumford's a pretty good one, but don't just don't make it. Like as long as if the right down the, below, what is a good name for a mummy MP like a mummy um, innkeeper like this? Like but it's not cover. like it can't be like Mister Mummy. Yeah. <laughs> like, something really inconspicuous, but then whenever the party finds out who it is, they're like, "Oh, oh for fuck's sake!" Why did I not think about that? Honest to God, why did I not think about that? You could leave a bunch of little hints to pique the players' curiosities. Constantly repeat that the inn smells of strange spices. Have children and NPCs mention something about feeling uneasy when near the innkeeper. That wouldn't make for a good business, though. I know. If you went in there and you're like, oh, mate, there's something off about this place. I know, I don't fucking like mate, it. there's no way he'd be making money if he I wants know. to stay in business for a few exactly. thousand years. <laughs> you need to be making that money. <laughs> I know. Make sure, well, not really, if he's if underneath the basement's full of fucking... Um, like gold and jewels and shit. He doesn't uh, really I need suppose to. he could probably pay the rent, and he's probably you know he's paid off his mortgage a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure he is adequately pensive around things like fire, even the smallest candle flame or match being enough to cause him to noticeably flinch. So would the place just be in darkness then? Uh, I think well, he would definitely have to have some from his staff. No, like the inn itself, because obviously electricity mm. doesn't run. So <laughs> would it just be? completely dark oh i don't know how oh, would that's you do weird. That? i don't know actually how would you guys see it if the players even attempt to detect alignment magic etc near or inside the inn tell them that an eerie overwhelming power floods their senses have patrons treat the inn poorly and have them show up as victims of terrible curses that's very yeah, that, yeah like that, that. let's be honest with you that would be the most likely of any of these yeah. things if the rogue sneaks around too much have him find strange cursed relics and sealed jars with animal heads engraved upon the lids. Oh, you know what, guys? I'm not even joking. See, the more we're doing this, I really just want to make fucking the Mummy movie campaign. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. <laughs> what's his mother. name? Brandon... Bra- uh, uh, oh, what's Brandon th- Fraser, is it? Or Brandon, uh, Brandon Fraser? Yeah, uh, just of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that movie, honest to God. Meg, can we watch that movie tonight? Oh, no. <laughs> it's a great movie. I love it, honestly. It was like my favourite movie as a kid. No, oh, I'm was the mummy called Emotap? Yeah, Emotap. But I love, you know the wee, uh, you know the wee fellow with the fairs? Yes. Uh, I <laughs> loved him. Yeah, he was, oh, he was great. Oh, I remember watching that movie and the, one, the bit that really got me was whenever all the, like, beetles went oh, on. Oh, yeah, the, the eat skin. people. Ugh. Ugh, don't. That's a bit of attachment. Come on, let's keep going. Sorry about that, guys. Like, the mummy's a great movie, okay? <laughs> Fight me about it in the comments. <laughs> I don't care. Turns out there was a city of necromancers built on top of his tomb centuries ago. They were the ones he accidentally woke him up. He destroyed them, but left their ruins on top of his own because the dead deserve their rest, even those he sought to rob others of it in life. So people investigating the sewers find all these necromantic ritual items and such. And might get the wrong idea. I love all this type of shit. It's See, like good. ancient, ancient cities where shit's just been built up and built up and built up. There's so much you can do with it. Yeah. Like, you know, the reality is, it's, it's, the, the amount of shit you can do is unlimited with like, ancient cities yeah. that still exist today. You know, well, still exist still today. Exist. Well, what is the older cities? I think Jerusalem is one of the Jerusalem, oldest. Jerusalem. What yeah. other ones are really old? I think Jerusalem has been active for, what, like 5,000 years? Yeah. Something silly like that. It's definitely ones in like the Middle East and stuff. Ah, uh, there's a few of them. Be. There's a few of them. I, I can't remember. I'll get it up here. So yeah, what do you know? They're all in the Middle East. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course they all. Like Syria, Lebanon, Lebanon, Greece, Bulgaria, Lebanon, <laughs> Egypt. Yeah. So we're gonna end it there. What would you do with this, uh, Mr. Mumford? Yeah. What would be a good um, campaign to run or plot? Anything really. I, I love the concept <coughs> of him, and I do like. I can't imagine him being evil. But no. the problem is, if he was but evil, he wouldn't be there. No. Like, you know, he would no, have been. I can't imagine being evil because he's been there for centuries, so he's used to people and he likes the interaction of people. Yeah. He, well, he's bound to have to like the interaction of people. But he has to put I up with know. them. 
he would have to put up with them. Like, yeah. you know, he wouldn't have much of a say. I definitely. Well, think... do mummies have much of a say? Oh, <sighs> well, you know, if he Not does, really. well, if he does, he's gonna get burnt. You know what I mean? They're gonna fucking witch. Uh, yeah, exactly. They're gonna do him for a witch. Mm. Most definitely, he's yeah. gonna get done for a witch. And let's be honest with you, the kids, all the kids, always like think, oh, he's. He's some evil fucking, like, you know, witch down the road. Yeah. You know what I mean? Type of thing. Like, everyone had one. Ever, I had one. Yeah, everyone had one. It's like, oh, that house is haunted. Didn't yeah. you know? I had a witch that lived down the road, but... Well, was that we not your always... auntie? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, always... we had a witch down the end of the road, but then we're all pretty sure he was pretty far. All right. Well, let's end the story. Uh, end the video here, guys. Well, well, he had, like, he had, like, a... He had a camera in his bathroom pointing outwards. What? To the street where we played. What? You tell me. Uh, okay. Absolutely um, weirdo. Uh, I used to steal our balls. I have got no idea where to go with this, <laughs> uh, Megan. Uh, I've got no idea. So, yeah, I think we're just going to wrap it up here. If you guys could, like, you know, subscribe, that'd be really cool. Or we're going to T-poos on you. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to T-poos on you. If you don't subscribe, just, just fuck, just fuck. Do you think you're on camera? Yeah. That they can see you T-poosing right now? Yeah. <laughs> like, this, this actually is getting really weird. Like, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I, I thought it was a cool thread, okay? I really enjoyed it, and I uh, hope you guys did too. Yeah, see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.